guys, I want to tell all of you a story about something that's greatly impacted my life. But first, I want to start off by giving you a scripture. <clears throat> this is Romans uh, 8, 28. All we know that God caused everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So keep this scripture in mind as I go on with my story. I want to share a message that I received on August 23rd, 2012 at 12.25 p.m. This is from my Uncle Mark. Hi, April. I wanted to let you know that your dad was in a motorcycle accident and is in a coma. He is in critical condition. Sorry to pass on bad news. We will keep you posted. Mark is on his way to hospital now. He is in Oshner Hospital. I received this message while I was on my 15 minute break at work, sitting in my car. <clears throat> and tears ran down my face. I felt like I couldn't breathe. And I just started praying. And I just came to the realization that maybe I was going to have to let my dad go. Which was the hardest realization because I hadn't talked to my dad for that whole year before. In fact, the year before, I said the worst things a daughter could say to her dad. And then I ignored him for a whole year. <clears throat> but I realized that maybe this is it. So my 15 minute break was up and I walk into work. And work lets me go for the day and however long I need. And because of my emotional state, it took me a little while to get home but I got home my mom had packed up the car we got in the car and we drove from Rhode Island to Louisiana left on the Wednesday arrived on Friday drove throughout the night <clears throat> and um, when we arrived there I didn't know what to expect really I mean we kind of got small updates of what it'd be like here and there but we didn't really know what was going on we knew he was in a coma we knew he was on a ventilator it was obvious that's what we saw we got in there and um, we sat and we waited for three hours for the doctor on call and I went in and I said hi to my dad and he was completely unresponsive, didn't have a single word to say to me, didn't look at me, just was unresponsive, needed a ventilator to breathe, had tubes running out of him, uh, was mangled. Thankfully he wore all of his gear, his uh, leather jacket, his pants, his leather boots, his helmet, so he wasn't burned up or he just had some bruises, but every bone was basically broken and anyways we waited for the doctor on call to come in and the doctor on call, you know, said that, explained that he was in a motorcycle accident, um, he was on a two lane highway or what we call highways, but you usually have it was airline highway where you have lights at every intersection, um, usually it's with side roads. And this is a road that my dad takes every day when he gets off of work uh, to go. It's right, it's actually only a couple blocks away from his house, and he gets off work and he goes down to the French Quarter, in New Orleans. And so he takes this route every day, and so he was going. Um, this direction and all the other vehicles are going this direction so <clears throat> he was going this way um, and uh, a guy who's going this direction decided to he was there was a car that was 
had, was, had his blinker on, was going to turn this way um, to go into the side roads. And there was another vehicle directly behind this one. And uh, this truck was speeding. And instead of rear-ending the car with the blinker on, decided to jump over the median, which was directly into my dad's lane where my dad was going. And my dad, um, I believe, by when I went to the salvage yard, I checked out his bike and looking at um, the gear that it was on and everything, it seemed like he tried to shift his gears down to try to stop. <clears throat> but... It seemed like he tried to stop, he couldn't stop, and instead of hitting the vehicle, my dad swerved and was airborne, uh, ejected off his bike, and went, I believe it's 80 feet down the highway, it was spotty dragged, and then his bike went pretty far down too. Um, so, that was where the accident happened, and the doctor then goes on to explain that his spinal cord could be potentially severed and he has various brain bleeds uh, and his chances are very low. Um, you know, he goes on to explain the various bones in his body that are broken, the organs that are damaged and the internal bleeding and things like that. And I said to the doctor that I'd like my dad to pass on. But my dad needs to go. That's what I said. He needs to go. So Monday comes, and this was the day that I was expecting that they would take my dad off the ventilator. That's what the doctor told me. So the doctor comes in, and the doctor sits us down and says, I think this patient should wait until December to, you know, we want to see how his progress is going to be. We want him to wait until December. And waiting until December, that's a lot of risk. Um... Not to mention a lot of help, a lot of bills to pay, and my dad. I know it, he's gonna. He if he stays on there, most likely if he gets out, he would be paralyzed from the neck down, and mentally retarded. And I said to the doctor, No, 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 no. You don't understand. My dad needs to pass on. This is what God wants. He needs to pass on. My dad wants to pass on. I know this, um, and. I fought with his doctor back and forth, back and forth, and, and he said, well, in the state of Louisiana, two doctors come together to make this decision that, and think it's best for the patient, then this is the decision we have to make. And so my dad was stuck in a coma for months, about, uh, about two months, and I stayed there in Louisiana, and I took care of him. And every day I prayed for strength. God gave me joy. God gave me this joy, and I had this smile on my face just about every day. And people would come up to me in the hospital and ask me, how are you so joyful? How are you smiling? Your, your dad's basically dead in his bed. And in fact, the social worker asked me, how are you so joyful? How are you smiling? And I said, well, for one, my dad knows Jesus and has salvation, and my dad's going to go to heaven and two, since I found out my dad got in a motorcycle accident, I've asked for strength. And God has given me peace. And more than that, God has given me joy. And I know this joy isn't me. God has given me this joy. And so I fought for to get my dad out of the ventilator for two months. And finally, I was able to get him transferred out of the hospital after fighting with you know, uh, doctors and the ethical committee and all that, uh, was finally able to get him into hospice, and he died on October 7th, and I gotta tell you, even after my dad died, I still felt joy, and in fact, I got a tattoo on my arm right here that says, um, death has lost its sting, because truly, if you believe that God can give you strength and give you joy, then he can. Death will lose its sting. So I just want to explain that this tragedy was in good timing, God's perfect planning, and had good purpose. It was in good timing because it was the exact age where my dad wanted to actually die. It was good planning because God put me in the places where people needed to be encouraged 
by the joy that God had given me. People's lives were impacted by the joy that I had in my life. And people's lives were even saved. Their souls were saved through it. And so God had perfect timing, planning, and his purpose through people were found. <clears throat> so God has a plan for all of us in his timing. I strongly believe that all things work together for our good and for the God's glory in times of tragedy. And I've witnessed this with my own eyes. Now, I just want to say that another really crazy thing, God thing, happened to me while I was the first nine hospice. Now, there was a scripture that my dad showed me, or shared with me when I was going through a hard time in my life, and it's Ecclesiastes chapter 3. My dad shared this with me. And uh, my friend Mark, the first night I was in hospice with my dad, actually messaged me and said, April, said some encouragement and said, April, open up your Bible to Ecclesiastes 3 and read the scripture. And actually, I want to show it to you. It says, A time for everything. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. So think back to that first scripture in Romans. Everything comes together for God's purpose and for good. If you look in tragedies, if you look really hard in the tragedies, God doesn't give us tragedies. Tragedies happen. But if you look real hard, God uses those tragedies for good. And you can find joy through them. Thank you.